house salad with grilled chicken, the half club sandwich with chips, or everyone's favorite, the fried shrimp plate. After work, Down on Main Street is the perfect spot for dinner and a drink on the patio. Join Down on Main Street every Wednesday for half price wings from four to close. Down on Main Street on Main Street in historic downtown Washington. Go Pirates! I'm Caleb Stroud, the founder of Stroud's Marine. I grew up on the water and I've loved boating my entire life. In 2012, I decided to give back to the marine community by creating a way for boaters to order pre-owned salvaged marine parts online. Stroud's Marine was born to offer incredible prices and unparalleled customer service. We stand behind every part we sell and our mission is to save you money and get you back on the water as quickly as possible. Visit StroudsMarine.com today for more information. Stroud's Marine, your best source for salvage outboard parts. Boss Jigsug Furniture is overstocked and overstuffed. Overflowing inventory means clear out prices. Save on a huge selection of sofas, sectionals, and recliners, dining sets, bedrooms, and mattresses. And right now, get $100 in MasterCard Rewards cards for every $1,000 you spend. Plus, we pay your sales tax. Use these savings on Bassett, Lazy Boy, Kincaid, and Hooker, plus many more. We're overstocked and overstuffed, and that means big savings for you at Bostic Sug Furniture. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have kept the fires burning for Eastern North Carolina Whole Hog Barbecue. At Sam Jones, you'll find our smokehouse pumping out wood-fired meats cooked fresh every single day. There are no freezers at our place. Everything, and we mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Stop in and see us, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. At Sam Jones Barbecue, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Eastern Carolina's longest-running sports radio show. The Brian Bailey Show is on the air. The Brian Bailey Show is powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by The Angus Grill, Bostic Sug, Bojangles, East Coast Grading, Gavigan Insurance, Greenville Auto World, Papa John's, Greenville Utility Company, Pepsi, The Rick House, Taft Taft and Hagler, and tiebreakers. And now, here's Brian Bailey. Good Monday, everybody, and welcome into our show an hour earlier this week because we've got the Monday press conference with John David Baker, the new offensive coordinator at East Carolina. from get over there and be with everybody at the press conference. So we decided to go an hour early. Got a special guest live in the studio and former East Carolina <laughs> defensive coordinator Greg Hudson. Great to see you again. Great to see you. Man, and you got lots of friends around here and you're back in town. <laughs> Yeah, I can probably count my friends on one finger. Um, <laughs> but no, it's it's good to be uh, here in Greenville. Uh, it, there's always been something about this place from when I first got here. And uh, it just keeps drawing me back. I tell you, we've got lots to talk about because uh, the college football playoff pairings are out. Lots of controversy there. Uh, also on the schedule today, Pirate Basketball. The men play at 4 o'clock this afternoon against Maryland Eastern Shore. Then the women play Maryland Eastern Shore at 6.30. So, Lots going on on this Monday. We've got Greg Hudson live in the studio. We'll take your questions or comments on our Facebook Live page, and we'll get with Coach Hudson and see what he's been up to lately right after this. best burgers around everyone loves a thick juicy and fresh burger tiebreakers in greenville plus the all-new tiebreakers in winterville do real burgers better than anybody so don't just go to any burger themed restaurant chain it's time to break the chain and eat local tiebreakers real burgers at its best everybody loves burgers Hi, I'm Ken Hagler of Taft Taft and Hagler. We're proud to be sponsors of the Brian Bailey Show and the Pirate Nation on Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. If you've been injured on the job or due to someone else's negligence in an automobile collision, call us at 752-2000 for a free consultation with experienced professionals who care. Go Pirates! Go Pirates! 
I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. It's bow time. Tis the season for food and family, but thanks to Bojangles, you don't have to spend hours in the kitchen when loved ones come home for the holidays. Set down the spatula and put away the mixing bowls, because this holiday season, Bojangles is ready to help you celebrate with all your family favorites, like Chicken Supreme, Cajun Filet Biscuits, or a big bow box of hand-breaded chicken, scratch-made biscuits, and fixins for the whole family. We'll make the food so you can focus on making memories. Head to Bojangles and gift yourself a taste of home. It's bow time. Let me show you what goes on behind the scenes when making a shakaroni. We create a shakaroni my way. An extra large pizza topped with extra cheese and extra pepperoni. It's a simple recipe. We take everything you love, then we build it bigger. Pizza gets bigger when you shakaroni. Hey, Pirate fans, Papa John's is the MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, better ingredients. Better pizza. Go Pirates. Boss Jigsug Furniture is overstocked and overstuffed. Overflowing inventory means clear out prices. Save on a huge selection of sofas, sectionals, or recliners, dining sets, bedrooms, and mattresses. And right now, get $100 in MasterCard Rewards cards for every $1,000 you spend. Plus, we pay your sales tax. Use these savings on Bassett, Lazy Boy, Kincaid, and Hooker. Plus many more. We're overstocked and overstuffed. And that means big savings for you at Boss Sug Furniture. This is Tim Doust, ECU football special teams coordinator, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, providing reliable utility solutions to the Greenville region since 1905. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back. We are not on Facebook Live, but we are on YouTube Live. So if you would go to the YouTube page for Pirate Radio, Pirate Radio Television, and you can uh, send us a question or comment, we'll get it to Coach Hudson. Coach, uh, now, you're not in the coaching business as of right now, but you're in some other things right now. Yes, uh, involved in some platforms. Uh, in the NIL space to where uh, trying to help people with the main problem is uh, sustainable, sustainability with uh, uh, the revenue and the money uh, for the collectives uh, that gets allocated to the players. And um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a problem uh, that everybody's facing on their campus because they've got donor fatigue. Um, they're trying to figure out how they're going to get money uh, to their booster club, to their uh, brick and mortar club, to build buildings and indoor facilities, uh, and then also, um, you know, the collective that, you know, where the payer, the players, uh, you know, get paid. Yeah, and and what you just said is everything in East Carolina right now because the, the pirate club still exists and that pays for the scholarships, and they're trying to raise money for the indoor practice facility, which they're at 15 million last I checked, and they have to get to I think 22 or 23. And the third part of that deal is the NIL deals. And they're, and they're trying to, with the Boneyard Collective and, uh, and trying to get that thing going. And they've got it going, obviously. But they, you have to continue to add to that because, you know, that's, that's something that you know, every year it kind of, you get back into it. Well, you just, uh, you have to go, you got to go get more. I mean, yeah. you got to be creative. You've got to find, you know, ways to to get sustainable um, income, revenue uh, coming in, and it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take uh, a bigger staff. First, you've got to have the infrastructure to go get it. Then you've got to be able to uh, get it to be sustainable over a period of time, and then allocate it the the correct way. But you know, there's so many opportunities. Our world is so connected. There's so many business opportunities. There's so many relationships that people have. And you're no longer just regional. I, I think that's used as an excuse sometimes. You know, we're a you know we're a global society. So you've got to think outside the box. You've got to go research different ways. And just because it um, hasn't been what everybody else is doing, um, I think places like East Carolina, you have to have uh, uh, better creativity um, and and go find uh, you know uh, more money. You know, if when we when we came. Uh, uh, 
at East Carolina, I remember Coach Holtz told Skip and I, he said, you know, if you're trying to raise money, he goes, you can raise a million dollars. You can either get one person to give you a million or you can get a million people to give you a dollar. Yeah. And that's exactly what you got to do. It's like the old Clemson thing was uh, I pay 20 a year or something, Ipte, yeah. something like that. that but, but you've got to get people you got to get people involved and it's got to be almost everybody involved with technology and I, I think that the big picture of what people are missing a little bit in the Nil space is all you see on television uh, where everybody what they see on television they think is a fact you see Shadir Sanders you see Sam Hartman the Notre Dame quarterback you see all these one percenters getting these deals and like in the NFL not everybody's getting the the contract that that Joe Burrow just signed so right. where's the low-hanging fruit what does the divided locker room look like I might have one um, percent or even five percent of my team uh, is going to get a decent amount of the, the funds. Well, what am I going to do with the other 70 guys? You know, what am I going to do with the, you know, the other uh, uh, six women on the, on the basketball team? How am I going to get, you know, how am I going to make them happy? Because if they're not happy, they're not going to play good and they're going to, it's going to be miserable and you're going to lose. And as the coach, you're going to get fired. So, how can we get after the low-hanging fruit and find, you know, there's people out there that if you gave them a platform where, uh, well, I, I, I can't give $2,500, but I could give $75 a month, and you do that over time, well, go get more of them. And there's the, the, common, the common fan, you know, the one that, that works 60 hours a week and drives an hour and a half to the game and tailgates, watches, uh, watches your show, which isn't that many, I'm sure. <laughs> but, um, but then At least two or three. But, is, but wants to be part of the team. Yeah. The NIL, I think there's, there's, a, there's a niche missing. You can make people part of the team because now they got a vested interest. And Jim Mora Jr. at Connecticut, UConn, said it best. If you don't contribute to the NIL, you do not have a voice about the football team. You don't have any voice. So whether you give 25 bucks or 25000 at least be part of the team. I think that low-hanging fruit's out there for people to go get. They're just not getting boots on the ground and going to get it because it's still the old school way you got to go see somebody in person you got to shake their hand and get off the zoom and go get them and get them emotionally invested and i think in part of society got lazy during the pandemic because of the zoom absolutely i mean a lot of it all of a sudden it's like instead of going out and meeting somebody and talking to them and, and looking them eye to eye man to right. man you know you, you get them on a zoom but you're not going to get the same effectiveness no and yeah. they're looking at their phone anyhow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All the time they're looking at their phone. But but it's almost like this. Like in the business world, you're taught early on when, when you get a job and you, you, you negotiate your salary. Like in my business, you negotiate a contract and you know what your salary is. Now, in private business, you know, that's private. Now, in public schools and stuff, like when you were coaching here, your salary <coughs> excuse me, was, was up for everybody to see. Sure. But in private, but but these ki these kids now, if, if one of them comes in and says, "Well, I'm getting such and such," well, they may be getting that, or they may not be getting that. But either way, they've got everybody talking about it, and that's where your divided locker rooms come into play. Yeah, and it still comes down to you know, are you producing? Are you playing? There's another part of the NIL that I, I'm not anxiously because it doesn't affect me anymore, but I'm I'm keeping an eye on is when you see these NIL deals. And then all of a sudden, uh, what happens when the guy's, you know, the, the guy's not producing? Right. The student athlete's not producing. You wanted to be, you wanted to be paid to, for your performing and, and your name, image, and likeness and be an employee. Well, you better produce or you're going to get fired. And, right. Um, I think uh, it, it's going to be a hard lesson to learn. And, you know, people are a little emotional and sensitive because, you know, they are college students and they're young. Uh, but, you know, they're employees and they're working, and it's a production business. What happens if a player gets hurt? Then uh, what happens? Those are all things that get worked out in the dynamics of the deal. Okay. You know, whether you're, uh, whether you're hurt and, uh, you know, the, the, you know that going in. Right. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just a tricky, tricky thing. And, yeah, uh, if you, yeah. If you have an NIL deal like the quarterback at, at Florida State and you get hurt and then somebody – pulls your deal that person that company is really going to have a problem right because that'll go that'll go uh all over the country in an instant and people just bash them but Bad it, business it, yeah is it at most schools that the quarterbacks are going to be the ones that get them the, the, the quarterback from little league to to the nfl that's no. 
that's the, that's the guy. Right. And you got to have them and you got to pay them. Yeah. But you hear about other schools saying we're giving everybody on the roster twenty five thousand, or we're doing. You know, I mean, they're and, not giving that much, but you know, uh, there's some teams that are that are given uh, a significant amount because they have it. I mean, it's right. just there's there's still the haves and the have nots. It's no different than, well, here's our indoor facility and here's how it looks. Well, here's ours. You know, now one's a one's a, a Mercedes and a Rolls Royce, and the other one's a you know a Ford Taurus yeah. XLT. It's a nice one and it's yeah. nice, but it's it's no different. It's right. the same. Yeah. Did you ever think that when you were coming through as a player and in a, as a coach early in your career that you'd be having conversations like this? No, I do remember. I this is this is going way back because in coaching you remember everything just about because you figure this is where I was at when this happened. So your mind just goes. I was at UConn. Uh, when uh, O'Bannon started the lawsuit, all right. at o- that's what yeah. started all this. Now you saw that took decades, right? It did for it to get done. Which is, uh, if you know about the NCAA, I mean, they work it beyond a snail's pace. And uh, um, but I, I, I really didn't. I didn't think. And I, what I did know after doing some work at the NCAA in football that I knew that this was going to get screwed up. I knew it was going to happen because you're going to take an opportunity and if you get people in athletics who are motivated, they want to win, they're competitive, they're going to find a way to stretch to stretch it. And you know, the perception was NIL. Oh, somebody's going to get an endorsement deal. They're going to endorse this product and they're going to get a little money and then all of a sudden they were getting cars and stuff like that and then they said, "Well, we're going to have to do another way." So they started the collective deal and basically they just started ATM machines. Yeah. Well, it's it's fascinating really where it's where it's come already and the thought process of where it's going. Well, it's it's going to be crazy for a while i believe personally either from conversations i've had and taking time to research i I think it will get regulated Uh, i don't i use that word uh cautiously when you say regulation because it's already a free market opportunity and you can't just say well you're not allowed to get paid this much anymore but i think there will be some regulations uh when when the feds get involved you know the federal um regulations will go to to make it controllable and make it at least reasonable yeah i mean it's, it's like the ohio state quarterback went in the portal today and word is that that all these sec teams are going to come after him with millions and millions and the highest bidder i mean yeah that's just that just doesn't seem like what it's supposed to be why is he in the portal like to get to make, first of all, he's not an underachiever. But the portal, like today, I think there's 2,400 people. It's full of underachievers. Right, right. It's loaded. I mean, right. they're first. They're the, the majority is in there uh, for the underachiever. But it, you know, I do know of a quarterback um, that was leaving a school, and you know, he was going to get a million dollar deal. I also have a, a friend that um, <laughs> that, uh, that I know. Uh, that is handling a lot of these. You know, I actually coached Mike Caspino out in Newport Beach, California, my first job. He's the OG lawyer for all of this stuff. When it, for, he did the first, that Tennessee deal or the, the millions and stuff like that. So I learned some stuff from him. Uh, you know, what you hear is not exactly uh, the true number, but it's high. I mean, you're going to hear a million dollar deal. Now, yeah. I'm not saying you're going to get a million, but, and you're getting taxed on it, but it's a, it's a great opportunity. And, you know the the money's there, and they're they're making the product work. And you know from the Big Ten, hoping they would get one million the first year of the Big Ten Network, and they got I think two or three, and now you're going to get seventy. So it's not stopping. Right. But it's just it just seems like, you know, and, and the other side with with the taxes involved. You know, if if I'm an offensive lineman at, at a college and they they give me. Fifteen thousand dollars to, to get mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Then I got to pay taxes on yes. that fifteen thousand, and that's you know. If, are these kids thinking about that as they get their money? That's a whole nother. That's <laughs> yeah. a whole nother thing. It's a whole nother episode. You have to have that if you have a responsible collective and the way the things are allocated. Then you're also issuing the, you know, the, the tax papers. You know, it's, yeah, it has to be uh, controlled, and that's part of being. Uh, uh, that's part of being an adult and having a full-time job is you pay taxes. Yeah, um, you know that's that's one thing that the student athletes have given up is you know when you're on scholarship and people say, "Well, I didn't get any money," but you, you also came out of college with no debt. 
Right. You know, that's and most people didn't. So you yeah. you know, like, you know, I paid over in the in the time that my daughter was here, I paid over a hundred thousand dollars for my daughter to go to East Carolina. Right. You know, and that you know, there's some debt there. Uh, student athletes on scholarship don't have that. So, you know, a lot of guys cried and, and whined about some things, but it, it wasn't what, you know, they were saying. Yeah. And uh, do you ever think they'll, they'll change it where you can't just tra- the one time transfer? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're going to, you're going to get one shot. Yeah. That's what I think too. You know, at some and, point in the, in the stuff, the documentation, uh, um, you know, and they do, they do need to do a better job. And this is the responsibility of the medical staff, the trainers, uh, even, even the coaches, you know, who know, you know, mental health with these student athletes, mental health everywhere, especially with our young population is, is worse than the, the, than the COVID, you know, it is, it is, it's everywhere. I'm not saying it's worse than COVID. Don't quote me on that, but it's, you know, yeah. it's, uh, um, you can't just go get a shot for it with right. mental health and, you know, there's there's a lot of things that have to be uh, taken care of with these young people, with dealing with the taxes and the mental health issues and stuff like that. Yeah, well, a whole gamut of uh, responsibilities in the NIL. Uh, we're going to take a break right now. Greg Hudson, former East Carolina defensive coordinator, is with us. We'll talk about his days at ECU, some of the things he remembers most about that. Uh, more on the NIL, much more. And a special time today, 11 a.m. till noon. And later on today, the John David Baker press conference, a complete coverage right here on Pirate Radio, 4 o'clock East Carolina maryland eastern shore for the men 6 30 for the ladies back with more on the brian bailey show after this Here with Greg Lasseter from Champions Gym. And Greg, you've got a tremendous staff working for you with professional trainers. You've got classes like cycle, Pilates, muscle pump, Zumba. Talk about what you can bring to people like myself who's just getting back into the physical fitness world. We've got all those classes, but the main thing we've got is a way for people to come in and feel comfortable. People, when they go in that gym, they feel like that is their home away from home. Give the address and the phone number. 4190 Bayswater Drive, Winterville, 353 Champions Health and Fitness. For years, Callie Ann Phelps has been singing about Phelps Chevrolet. Phelps Chevrolet is the one for you. Low, low prices, service too. See the big dealer right away. Carolina's finest, Phelps Chevrolet. And you'll agree with what Skyler Phelps has to say. Nobody beats Phelps Chevrolet's prices. Nobody. The name you can depend on. Phelps Chevrolet. Get you on. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Jake Hunter, your favorite dance guy for the ECU Baseball Pirates, and my brand new Hop to the Hum t-shirt is now available exclusively at PR927FM.com. My t-shirt is only $20 and is available for pre-order now until December 10th. This shirt will have you and all your pirate friends hyped for the 2024 baseball season. Get shopping and get hopping to the hum. Visit PR927FM.com to purchase yours today and hop to the hum with me in 2024. Go Pirates! Familia is your go-to spot for the best Italian dishes around, including pizzas, pastas, salads, and homemade desserts. That's Familia. Enjoy half-off wine night on Wednesdays, $3 drafts on Thursdays, or get a pizza of the week for just 12 bucks. That's Familia. Plus your order online or call 689-6330, and Familia will have your order ready in their drive through window for pickup. That's Familia. Clip, really? Oh, sorry. Familia on Fire Tower Road in Winterville near Pitt Community College. The convenience of Pitt Greenville Airport is waiting just outside your front door. Service is back, so you're connected to destinations worldwide through flights from American Airlines. Plan your next trip. Book your flights today at flypgv.com or aa.com. Good news, business travelers. PGV and American Airlines has added a new early morning flight available now. Book today at aa.com and be on time for that connection in Charlotte. Fast, convenient, and close to home, PGV has American flights perfect for your next trip. PGV. Where the pirates fly. The holiday tradition is back. It's the Nutcracker, presented by Dance Arts Theater. The Nutcracker will be at Wright Auditorium on the campus of ECU December 9th and 10th. Saturday has a 2 p.m. matinee and a 7 p.m. evening show. Sunday has a 2 p.m. matinee. Get your tickets now by going online at tickets.ecu.edu. Proceeds from this event will benefit the Maynard Children's Hospital at ECU Health and Medical Center in Greenville. Celebrate the season with the Nutcracker, presented by Dance Arts Theater. 
Sure. Dixon Williams from ECU Baseball, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community owned, community powered. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to the show. Greg Hudson, former East Carolina defensive coordinator, live in the studio with us. And uh, he had some great defenses at East Carolina. Right now, the Pirates are known for uh, their defense as far as the football team is concerned because Blake Harrell did such a great job with that squad this year. And that defense kept East Carolina in every game. Obviously, the problems were on offense. And uh, we've got the press conference coming up at 1 o'clock. John David Baker who was the Ole Miss tight ends coach and co-offensive coordinator, but he's taking the job at East Carolina on Mike Houston's staff. Uh, that's coming up at 1 o'clock. But uh, it's hard to fix fix an offense in a year. Can it be done? Depends on the roster. Yeah. It, it, you can hire, you know, coaches, analysts. You better have players. Why did we win? Why did, I, did we have a really good defense? Players. Yeah. We had really, really good. But we had some great players. We had some great college football players. Yeah. And uh, we had some guys go to the NFL, and we had them at the best spot that you need them that were our NFL players, and that was up front. I mean, Linville's still playing. I know. <laughs> He's the ageless wonder. He's, He's got, still playing. Linville's got the best part-time job in oh, the yeah. country. Oh, yeah. He sits just, out camp. Yeah, it, that camp is overrated. Let's just Half don't go season. to camp. And he goes in and plays first down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's that's, fast. Well, that's, that's, a, that's <laughs> if you can get it. And he's played for a long, Dude, long time. My, my nephew's uh, Anthony Barr, and he just, the linebacker, he just re-signed with the Vikings. He was a first-round draft pick out of UCLA. And he he, he didn't go through camp, and he, set up, he signed this about the same time. And I think you'll see that with the veterans. Um, you know, they're sort of like the designated hitter in yeah. baseball. They come in and, you know, they'll give you some time and, uh, you know, they they can learn the system real fast or they've played for that coach. We have so many great players. on CJ's at North Pitt now. Yeah. He's a football coach at North Pitt. Yeah. He ought to ride down there and see him. And he had a good year this past year. He's done a good job. Real, real, just a great, outstanding. I did not know that CJ could play the piano like he did oh until we gosh. were at the bowl game. And I was watching him. I was like, is this, is this a fake deal? How's he playing it that way? It was awesome. Awesome. Guys like John Legend on the pitch. Yeah, he's, he's so talented, and that's that's one thing our team had. Uh, we had a lot of talent. We had really, really good players at all of our positions. You know, S- Skip did a great job of uh, you know managing and being the captain of that pirate ship. I mean, there was always a great morale. Uh, that's the other thing that we had is our morale was always good. We were going to have the most fun at a bowl game, and we were going to. Uh, be treated the best uh, and we were going to take care of our players and uh, but we expected them to win and we expected them to produce yeah. and, but it all could you know you can slice and dice in anything you want you know and I was with Glenn Mason in Minnesota he just would say it all comes down to coaching it does it all comes down to coaching and uh, it's not the well I told them well you didn't tell them enough yeah, and right. uh, um, you got to get these guys to produce and we did because of accountability and but we had talent I know a guy you miss probably every day of your life is Rock, Rock Rogerman. He oh, was here, man. man just uh, I'll never forget. At, I, I believe we were in Memphis for one of the Liberty Bowls, but uh, he was he was he was feeling kind of bad. But he flew out and they came out yeah. to practice, and man, that was emotional. Was that awesome? Oh my God, I'll, I'll never Rogan forget Andrew. it, man. He's, he he came out there, and I, it, there wasn't uh, there wasn't a dry eye out no, there. It was, it was it? amazing, and I yeah. remember, you know we worked on that to get him there, and. Uh, and, uh, and those players, you know, loved him, loved seeing him, and uh, you, know. you know, Rock was, uh, I'm, you know, Skip when he when he offered me the job, um, after he had offered the job to my wife to come to, to a warm climate, you know, <laughs> yeah, they, right. Skip and Jen were he smart. Knew, he knew how to I, do I, it. I found out second <laughs> yeah. that we were coming to East Carolina. That's right. <laughs> Good recruiting job. <laughs> and uh, and uh, but Rock, he asked Skip, I said, "What do you need?" And uh, I gave him, I gave him two things. Rock Rogerman, Rick Smith. Yeah, that's that's all I said. I didn't say anything about players and budgets and salary. I said Rock Rogerman, Rick Smith, and we got him. And Rock, you know, Rock picked me up from the airport on my visit to Notre Dame. That's how long I've known Rock. Wow. And Rock was a big brother type to me. He was a, you know, he he, he just was a wonderful human being. Everybody loved Rock. Um, he just he gave us such a, a sense of spirit. You know the old, you know, team spirit, rock yeah. epitomized spirit. And, oh, he did. And uh, you know, we used to. I used to have this. I used to have fun with rock. I'll tell you this story real quick. So, we would we would try Wednesdays is always you know 
sometimes it can lull during the season in October, you know, yeah. oh God, and Wednesday practice, let's have a good day. But so what I would do sometimes in the, near the end of our meetings, right before lunch, I'd, I'd kick Vernon or Rick Smith under the desk and I'd, I'd say, I'd go, hey, Rock, man, what, is, what do you think's wrong with our D-line? And you'd see the smoke start, his face would turn red. <laughs> and he'd start clenching his fists. And I'm like, I, don't, I can't figure it out. I thought about it last night. And I said, you know, it just doesn't look like they're really, really running to the ball. You know, that's the first thing I see is if they're not running to the ball like we need them to, there's got to be something else. He starts hitting the table. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Man, <laughs> that, day, that day in practice, he would have that whistle in his mouth. The ball would be thrown, and his ass was sprinting, chasing him, yelling at the top of his lungs, run to the ball, get to the ball, and he'd huddle him up right by the ball. And Scotty and Linville and Jay Ross are dying, and he'd chase him back to the line of scrimmage. Man, he would come in Thursday. He'd come in. He'd sit down. He'd go, God, I ate. And I went home. Man, I fell asleep on the couch right away. I don't know what's wrong with me. It's like, geez. Man, he, he ran to Tarboro, basically. Yeah. But, I, man, those guys would start laughing. And, and we would just watch it start as soon as we get to that team period. I was like, all right, man. And he would go. It was so much fun. Yeah. And we miss him. We miss him. Uh, you know, I do. I think I do think about him every day. I thought so. Yeah. And uh, you know, I, I've stayed in touch with his uh, with his family. I still talk to his brother and his sisters. You know, his dad passed away uh, a couple years ago. But when I took the uh, the Purdue job, I went to see his dad when I was recruiting up in South Bend because that's where he's living. He, he, you know, he went to Purdue and yeah. um, spent a lot of time. And uh, Rock still, I call him the patron saint of college football. And patron state of coaching, and uh, I think about him every day. Yeah, I agree. And Rick Smith, he he came back as defensive coordinator, and he turned the defense around yeah. at one point. Yeah, Rick's, Rick says Rick's maybe a great as good guy. Coaches yeah. that's ever walked this, the face of the earth. Well, well, I tell you what, it's it's uh, something when you look back and you look back to the championships that East Carolina was able to win in 08 and 09, the Conference USA titles. One of those was on the road at Tulsa, the big win there, and then yeah. I remember the one seven turnovers. Uh, the one, yep, and the one at East Carolina when the uh, Houston came it down. That Houston team was good. Uh, yeah, and I told I told uh, Coach uh, both times, and I told Fitch, I said, listen, they're going to throw the ball for a ton of yards, and you guys always bust my chops about passing yards, which, by the way, in the top ten things to win a football game, total yards passing is number eight. Ah, Pass efficiency defense is like four or five. I think it's five. So stick that in your points head. is number one. Points is I one, think. and we did. You know, we only gave up nineteen the one year. By the yeah, way, I remember. So I don't remember busting your chops about passing. Why? Well, maybe I did. You did. It was in 07 and we were we were terrible. Yeah. But uh, but you couldn't <laughs> run the ball on us, and we were going to get turnovers. So so we were going to play Tulsa, and before the game, you know, I'm thinking, God, these guys are going to. It's gonna, it's gonna be yards everywhere. So we go out for pre. I said, Rock, come on, let's go out. Of, let's, let's go watch the centers and guards warm up you know they're one of the first groups out those guys come running out of the locker room i lose my mind i start elbowing rock and grabbing him up rock they look like me and you they're out of th- we're gonna get after these guys i go back in the locker room and i grab the defensive line and i i call them up i just start ripping them i'm like are you kidding me you can't block these these guys gonna block you i just you know i'm hamming it up totally Jedi mind trick. And uh, I told Linville Joseph, I said, Linville, I don't care if you get a tackle. I don't care if you get a sack, but you kick that center's butt all day. So before the first play, which was the pick for the, for the, or the third down for the yeah. touchdown, before yeah. the first play, though, you all of a sudden see our defensive lines and the guys in Nick Johnson and Pierre, they start laughing. So after we get to the sideline after the interception and then we get him settled down, I sit down. I said, what in the heck was so funny before the first snap? Scotty Robinson imitated Linville Joseph with his slight lisp. He said, Coach, Linville looked at that center. He said, hey, man, nothing personal, dog. But Coach Hud told me to whoop your ass. I'm going to do it all day. <laughs> That's a true story. And so, so it's funny that I've told other people that story. And then, like, even when I was at Florida State around the kids, I'd tell the story. And some kids would say, I'd say, what do you think about today? He goes, Coach, I'm going to whoop that guy's ass all day. So it lived on, you know. And uh, 
That was one of the funniest things ever. I mean, yeah. it was hilarious. I bet. So I bet. what you see on the sidelines isn't all like serious rocket science business. And it, so near the end of the game, one other story. Near the end of the game, so we're, we're whooping Pat White in West Virginia. Yep. Like a yard dog, we're beating them. What was that foul? 24-3 or something yeah, like that? Only yeah. time Pat White didn't score a touchdown in his career in a game. Wow. And so... It's the near the end, and they somehow there's a TV timeout or something, and they're gonna try to you know score. So we I call the guys over, and we're standing there, and we're in my organized huddle because I was really anal about that, and I'm looking at them, and I said, listen, I have no freaking idea what I can tell you right now. I got nothing good for you. I said, so just start shaking your head like, and I'm talking like I could just start shaking your head like I'm telling you some really great stuff. And the, and the slate and those guys, they started bobbing. Have you seen on film? They're bobbing their heads and they're walking around. I said, now, you, you, can, you can pimp it up on your walk out there. You can swagger it up out there. So we're all standing there going like this, and guys are hitting their chest. So that's those real deep, huddled up deep conversations. Huddled up. I'm like, I, I said other words. I said, I don't got an effing thing uh, I can say yeah. to you right now. I said, but there's a chance we're on national TV, and they're looking at us because it's a short time out. Let's act like I'm telling you some really good stuff. That's funny. And that's one reason coaches don't like us in the huddle with the camera sometimes because they ain't, yeah, say. they're not saying anything. I remember the uh, the Hawaii Bowl against Boise State, and like the first play of the game it was either a swing pass or a, or a sweep or something, and two or three pirates just knocked the pee out of oh, somebody, yeah. and and they and they set the tone with that first right that first play. You know that's. A, if you if I had to pick something that I thought was a pivotal point for the turn in our defense, it was it was bowl practice for Boise. And the staff, we took a long hard look at some things and we just made a few wrinkles, but we really focused in on some details and simplified and got better and utilized our talent better. One of the things we changed is so simple that actually when we played Tulsa later in the championship, when I saw the head coach from Tulsa at the convention, he said, when did you switch to the 3-4 defense? And I, I, was like, I was like, I just threw it in there. It's total BS. So the only thing we changed is we played our base defense, and I would look at Zach Slate, and I'd go, thumbs up. That means he was – remember when all of a sudden Zach Slate started standing up, yeah. moving around, yeah. and I'd tell him, and I taught him where to go didn't change the other 10 guys that's all we did and it would just disguise our coverages and looks yeah. and i'd have the nose guard in our shade you know Linville or jay ross line up a little heavier it looked like we we're in a three four and we weren't yeah we we're still playing base zone auto out our yin yang and uh but we were able that that bowl preparation to what we did i mean we were ready to play that game when we got on the plane to yeah. leave for hawaii and yeah. that changed that changed the dynamic. We really got as physical as we were. We even got more physical because it took two, three years. It finally clicked, and the guys could see it. And once they can see it and make adjustments themselves, uh, then, then you got them. Yeah. The um, the Hawaii Bowl, was that the best bowl you ever had? No, there's no better bowl. I don't oh, care where you that's go. That's what I say. Go to Hawaii. Yep. If we don't go to Hawaii, my kids are even like If you're not playing the, for the national championship, yes. then you need to go to go Hawaii, Hawaii because it's unbelievable. And we had – those guys at Boise were meeting and doing this, and the coaches were working, and we were having a ball. Yeah. We knew that we were going to have great morale. Skip was so good at that. And, and, you know, you always make sure – I learned this from Glenn Mason. When you give out per diem, you always make sure your team gets a little bit more because the first thing the guys do at the first event is, like, how much per diem do you get? We got $550. Oh, God, we got 375 bucks. Boom, you got you got an edge right there. The kids are pissed off at the operations <laughs> guy. So uh, – but that, that – that was a big that was a big turning point for us and uh we we, we had we did it right yeah and yes. i've not been you know my kids were even like god we got to go to memphis again oh yeah yeah we we, we we were in dc for a week didn't even play that bowl the military bowl recently we were in birmingham last year all these cities they do a nice job with it and yeah. obviously they don't have the what hawaii has but Man, that Hawaii Bowl was something. It was awesome. Yeah, it was it was really incredible. Greg Hudson, former East Carolina defensive coordinator, my guest. We'll take another commercial break. Back with more on this Monday after this.
The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier restaurant and bourbon authority. Jefferson's, Basil Hayden, Woodford Reserve, and a Midwinter Night's Dram are just a few of the incredible bourbon options. The Rick House features the very best steaks and fresh, made-from-scratch pastas. The Rick House can host your corporate event or special parties in the 3,000-square-foot banquet hall. Join the Rick House for Sunday brunch from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and for the wine tastings on the last Friday of every month. The Rick House. Turkey, ham, bacon, these and other meats are great around the holidays and every other day, but they all leave behind grease when you cook them, and grease is a real pain in the drain. When you pour grease down a drain, it cools and can clog sewer lines. That can lead to sewer spills, which are messy, bad for the environment, and can also be expensive. Never pour grease down the drain. Instead, collect it in a container like a used soup can or jar. Let it cool and throw it away in the trash. Together, we can protect our sewer system and the environment. For more information, go to GUC.com. Okay, honey, the holidays are almost here. You know we're hosting, right? Yes, dear. Did you get those things done that I asked you to do? Yes, dear. Really? Yes, dear. You cleaned the gutters, pressure washed the driveway, and replaced our HVAC system? Yes, dear. Doing it right now. Really? Because it looks like you're sitting in your chair watching football. I called Delcor. They got us a brand new HVAC unit for just $120 a month. Wow. $120 a month? That's pretty good. And for only $30 more a month, we got the Delcor service plan that covers preventative maintenance and repairs, including parts and labor, for 10 years. That's them. Wow. That is a great deal. Well, the kids and I are going out. Enjoy the game. Yes, dear. Visit DelcorInc.com to find out how you can get a new replacement HVAC system for under $120 a month. With top-of-the-line manufacturers like Train, it's hard to stop a train. Go to DelcorInc.com or call Delcor, the service professionals. The Angus Grill is your premier spot for the best burgers, cheesesteaks, and brisket sandwiches around. Join us for our unmatched variety of burger combinations. From the mushroom bacon Swiss burger to the jalapeno popper burger to the original Angus Classic. Pair that burger with our amazing onion rings, tots, fries, or sweet potato fries. Angus Grill, with four amazing locations in eastern North Carolina, including Winterville near Pitt Community College, on Jarvis Street in Uptown Greenville, and on Statensburg Road near the hospital. It's the best burger around, guaranteed. Give the gift of joy to kids in your community and become a holiday hero with Youth Villages. Youth Villages helps children with emotional and behavioral issues and those aging out of foster care. You can ensure no child is forgotten this holiday season and give them a cheerful start to the new year. Go to youthvillages.org backslash holiday to find out how you can be a holiday hero. That's youthvillages.org backslash holiday. Have a happy holiday from the folks at Youth Villages. This is former ECU baseball player and mayor of Greenville, P.J. Connolly, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned utilities mean local control, low rates, and high reliability. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to the show. Greg Hudson, former East Carolina defensive coordinator, live in the studio with us. We're on a special time today because of the press conference coming up for John David Baker, the new offensive coordinator at East Carolina. Again, 4 o'clock hoops today. Uh, I'm not sure why the men are playing at 4 o'clock. I thought it was a holiday when I saw it on the schedule. I said, nobody told me so Monday was a holiday, but uh, it is for us. We get a chance to go watch some basketball did, at 4 o'clock. Did the women play at like 11 the other day? Well, they played – was it? Maybe that was a tournament. Uh, yeah. Oh, it was, they played at 2 on uh, Saturday against Coppin State. but they Oh, they played at 11. They did play the elementary education game. Right. They bring all the school kids in. Oh, really? I was there for that one. And they bring all the school kids in. And, and I think this, the attendance was 6,166, if I remember correctly. Wow. A huge crowd. And, and the best part about that story – as we were in the gym doing some stuff for the coaches show later and the people cleaning up and it was popcorn everywhere and, oh, and, the, and the people clean up said you know every year they, they do this it, yeah. it's the worst cleanup <laughs> because you know during the season you know they Bring make it some good crowds yeah they did they had blowers out and they're blowing the popcorn everywhere oh, trying to man. get it all cleaned up but uh yeah it was it was something else but four o'clock hoops and six thirty for the women tonight so a doubleheader in basketball we're of course talking football with greg hudson uh Greg is now involved with some NIL initiatives and that kind of thing, and, and he's got some insight for everybody. If you if you had a chance to talk to the people of Eastern North Carolina like you do right now, what do you tell them about NIL? What do you tell them that you know to get to get this thing in East Carolina turned around? Just like anything that the Pirate Club goes around telling, and I and when you go speak as a coach, you know one of the things you preach is 
you know, uh, no contribution is too small. And there's uh, there's ways to be creative and the, there's ways to be part of the NIL platform, whether it's, like I said, with, you know, $25 a, a month or something, you know, whatever, you know, or 25000 I I just think... You know the the involvement and to support your team. This is a, this is a new way to be an active supporter of the team and have a vested interest. And, and well, one of the other questions I have about the NIL is that if, if you're in the Pirate Club and you give a certain amount of money, you move up with your points mm-hmm. and you get you get a chance to do you know it, maybe a, a luxury parking box, spot. a parking spot. Yeah. You know there are things that are offered with the NIL. You don't really have that. No. And that's that's a big difference too. Yeah, but you know what you have is you know you you know you are giving immediately to the product. Right. You know, you're giving to specifically where the where the revenue is going, and, and you know that's that's what the game has become. But you know what what I've learned is you know there's so many platforms out there, and there's so many opportunities. Just like you know how things are going to change. You know what, how did Amazon start? They were selling books. Right. You know, and now now look at it. So. The same way with the collectives, you know, what you're doing now might not necessarily be the only way that you can. It's not the only way that you can do it. What I've what I've learned is, you know, uh, uh, that they do need money and and people are uh, willing to be creative. And you know, we thought of some platforms where we, if we can give people a consistent product or products or opportunities in the platform and sustain it for. Uh, periods of time and even to where it is guaranteed revenue even say monthly and do it over a series of time then it's easier for people to join into it because i'm not just writing you a check for you know four thousand dollars right. you know i may give you a little bit but um you know it's like putting something on layaway you know, right we're gonna we're gonna you know buy something for christmas now i'm gonna buy it in october and uh you know i finance my engagement ring to kelly you know, that's the same thing. I'm, right. You know, now, I remember those days of five. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know, how much you want to spend and, yeah. you know, or how much can you spend? I mean, how much can you contribute? If somebody uh, is able to contribute uh, a certain amount for a certain amount of time, then you got to you got to send up the infrastructure. That's the other thing is what I've learned also in, in, in now being in the, the, the private sector of business is you can have all the great ideas and products in the world that you that you can think of. And there's a million of them. There's thousands of them sitting in people's garages. Why? Well, one, they can't produce it. And two, they can't get it to the consumer. And if you can't do that, you're dead in the water. So you might as well even stop. And so how can you take things like that that you can produce, you can get to somebody you know, how can we get this opportunity to somebody that's willing to give to this NIL? And it's the same thing. Excuse me. But it takes a staff of people and the follow-up. You know, I didn't learn a lot in the Notre Dame Business School um, uh, that I have a minor in, by the way. Uh, I did learn that the fortune's in the follow-up. I remember uh, Professor Luis Bruzai telling us that in, in marketing, that the, the fortune is in the follow-up. And it's the same way with the NIL. It's the same way at the Power Club. It's the same way... Uh, you know, with the, the the College of Engineering, where they're trying to raise funds and send funds and sending people out, you got to find more people. You got to get you got to make a big have a bigger net. You got to fish in the deeper part of the water, and you got to hustle. I mean, it still comes down to the hustle. Right. You got to go get it. And I think if there was something organized where somebody could, I don't know if you, the mass mailing would work or something, but if you could sign up to do say fifty dollars a month, I mean most people could probably afford fifty dollars a month. The NIL. And but, what but, do you, what do you, then what are you going to get? What is, what can you give that person of value that they will enjoy? And that's what that's what the the guys that I'm involved in, you know, that's what we're doing. It, it uh, and you know, Coach Holtz again, senior told you know said in his uh, his video uh, do right the biggest motivational video forever for one at one time, he said the success the business is just giving people what they want, and that's what you have to do uh, as far as attracting these people that um, and doing this platform is we got to give them something they want because they're going to give us something they want, just like a regular business you know they're going to buy our product or buy our 
um, ideas or technology and, and whatever creative thing you can come up with, but you've got to have the infrastructure and the platform, which the groups that I'm with, you know, these guys are experts. I mean, they're, they're real deal global. I mean, we could, we could sell stuff in nine countries if we wanted to right now. Wow. So it's really, um, but it's not because they just started it and they're a quick fix. This is, this is almost two decades worth of stuff that these guys have been so fortunate through the relationships to partner with. I mean, these guys have sweat, they got sweat equity. Um, by the gallons uh, that they've put in to build this infrastructure. All right, let's talk college football a little sure. bit. You saw the uh, the college football playoff, the Final Four. Did, right. you, did you agree with it? Yeah. Did you? It's it's an emotional loss, and I feel bad. You know, I know, I know the coaches down there. Odell Haggins, their D line coach, is a wonderful friend and human being. But uh, you you know, I you knew the first time as soon as that quarterback got hurt. I mean, that was the Florida State right started. Away. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, are they? It's how you define the team, you know. Are we right. a better team because everybody gets along? We love do we love each other better than the guys at Alabama do? You know, well we're a better we're we're a better team. Well, how, give me people just say that. You know, what are the parameters? Define it. That's the one thing that I really loved about what coaching taught me is you know you got to be accountable for everything on the whys and the hows and define it. And there's no gray areas. So. Are these the better team? And if I would just say, are you willing to bet your job that you think Florida State is going to beat Alabama? No. Well, then why would you put them in? Well, I think they deserve to be in because Nobody, they ran the you, table. They ran the table. Hey, they I'll, beat I'll LSU. They played. They played everybody on their schedule. Even though their if their quarterback hadn't gotten hurt, would they be in? Yes. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense to me. Because they still kept winning. They didn't lose. Were we were we a better team when we lost Quentin Cotton? Or no. worse team. Worst team. Well, what's the difference in Florida State losing their quarterback? But why play the games it? then? Then as soon as the quarterback got hurt, Florida State just said, All right, we, we forfeit the rest of the way because we can't we Because can't do the system right now is to be the voting. Yeah. So you have to vote on the best four. Yeah. Well they got jacked by the system. I don't agree with the system. Right. You know, I, and, and the ACC has only themselves to blame because they're part of that group that didn't want to expand until twenty four. Here's right? the other problem. All right. We're tr- it's just like if you try to keep everybody happy, you, you're going to lose. Right. So they're trying to keep everybody happy, and the team that screwed this up, I think, in my opinion, is TCU. Oh yeah, yeah, because yeah, exactly. There's two because, teams that have gone into the playoffs, and they were like, "Oh, this is so great! Everybody's yeah. inclusive, and we can all get together." And and Hawaii's going to play. Remember when Hawaii went and played in the Sugar Bowl or something, yeah. and got? I think Georgia beat them like a yard dog at the yeah, drum. I think you're right. And then TCU goes and gets, and people are going, "Well, well now we got to we got to decide whether who's going to put." And I will tell you this: in my opinion, well, maybe it's not just my opinion, but those guys in the in the the, the, the run those television companies, oh, yeah. those TV companies, you know, those power wigs like yeah. you in the media, yeah, those yeah, big yeah, guys yeah, vote for the Heisman. How do you like that? I heard you were ripping me about that. That's just not right. I heard that It's position. a skewed vote now. Cause, I, I heard that position. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know how many North Carolina voters there are, but uh, I think there's seven or eight of us, but yeah. But there's voters all over the country, so oh, I I'm sure really you guys got a big Zoom you get on and, and watch. How much film have you watched? I haven't watched any film. I don't oh. watch, but I've watched games. I, I saw I saw the LSU quarterback in two di- different games, and I keep up with the stats. And mm. yeah, I yeah. think I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You turn on college football on Sirius, and you listen to uh, uh, the the commentators. Rick, no. Neuheis, Rick Neuheisel. If you want real information, that's really the facts and how it should be. Listen to I'm telling you, Neuheisel. Right he's every good. Time. Yeah, he's, he's right good. every time. And and the system is just you know. Washington screwed it up, you know, a pack, a pack, what, well, pack three team, pack, pack 12, pack one and a half, pack up and you're done, yeah. um, is, uh, is they're in, they went undefeated, yeah. and, you know, had Washington not done that, like history has shown that, you know, outside of Pete Carroll running it, that the pack, you know, the West coast was not going to bring somebody to the party yeah. and, and they did. <laughs> but it had been interesting but, to see if Oregon had beaten Washington Friday night. You know, would Oregon have gotten in or would Florida State have gotten in instead of Oregon? I think if it would have been Oregon getting in instead of Florida State, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. Because the, the, I think putting Alabama in and Nick Saban made people angry. Well, I'm sure. They just hurt more. Yeah. And 
I, as soon as that was like, man, when Alabama beat you, I said, oh, boy, Nick just did it again. He yeah. just, he's just sitting in his office laughing. He's like, man, they just can't beat me. Yep, he got it I'm figured still out. still here. Yep, he did. And when Georgia won, what, 29 in a row? And they, were, they fell from one to six? I really thought Georgia had a chance. That was on purpose, too. Well, we're going to really punish Georgia. For, for screwing losing, it all up. For screwing it up. So we're going to move them all the way to six. Not only are they not a possibility, we're going to put you at six. Yeah. Nobody remembers who's number six. That's right. They don't. <laughs> All right, we got to take a final break. This All is right. Greg Hudson. He's the former East Carolina defensive coordinator. Lots of thoughts on everything and anything and everything in college football. Back to wrap up this edition of the Brian Bailey Show for you right after this. This is John Gavigan with the Gavigan Agency. Our top priority is doing what is best for our members. Whether you are buying a new vehicle, a new home, protecting your family with life insurance, or filing a claim, our agency will be there every step of the way. Our goal is to become a trusted advisor for you and your family for all of your personal and commercial insurance needs. Give us a call in Greenville at 756-1400 for a car, home, business, or life insurance quote today. And give us the opportunity to show you the benefits of doing business with someone who cares hey miles isn't it amazing to think our family has been distributing soft drinks since 1923 it certainly is landon and with that comes a lot of change but what hasn't changed is our dedication and commitment to our customers i'm miles Menges, and i'm landon Menges with Menges bottling group our family has taken great pride in refreshing our neighbors and we are proud to have remained locally owned and operated for over a century from our family to yours, we say thank you and are honored to be a part of this wonderful community. Here's to 100 as we celebrate our employees and our customers all over East North Carolina. From generations before us and to future generations. Cheers to the next 100 years. Cheers to the next 100 years. Hey you, yeah you, have you heard? Green Auto World is under new ownership and is now part of the DriveHereNow.com network. DriveHereNow.com is run by local people who buy, service, detail, and sell everything directly to you. Green Auto World is now the fifth dealership to join the DriveHereNow.com network. Get car shopping today at DriveHereNow.com and choose a location near you. DriveHereNow.com, serving Eastern North Carolina for over 47 years and proud supporter of the Pirates. Gobble up savings at your CBD store with their daily in-store specials. If you struggle with sleep, anxiety, or pain, your CBD store has what you need. Did you know their Delta gummies are the number one in the world? They also have Delta seltzers, THCA flour, and pre-rolls, as well as gifts, jewelry, and accessories. They even have pet products for your furry friends. So stop by your CBD store today, open Monday through Saturday from 11 to 7, and located at 420 East Arlington Boulevard. Go Pirates! Pizza, subs, slice, ice. Jenny, what are you doing? Just letting the Pirate Nation know that Cuccinella's has two locations. One in downtown Greenville across from Sub Dogs and now in midtown Greenville beside Best Buy. Did you know Cuccinella's is open every day with $6 lunch specials, slices all day, beer, wine, and their famous homemade gelato. Cuccinella's in downtown Greenville and now their new location next to Best Buy. Go Pirates! This is Big John Williams, strength and conditioning coach for East Carolina football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, working for our community, not for shareholders. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to our show. Greg Hudson, former East Carolina defensive coordinator, live in the studio with us, and, and you've dropped, what, 70 pounds of Seven. late? How'd you do it? Uh, Well... I got alcohol out of my life. Okay. Um, I turned everything over to God, and I just uh, I quit eating bad stuff. You know, you can say I, uh, you, I, I, I say, well, I did intermittent fasting, which I say you don't need an app for it. You just basically starve yourself for <laughs> certain points of the day. But, uh, you know, I just got all the impurities out of my body, things out of my life, and uh, made a commitment to it and for a life change. Yeah. And, you know... You'd sure. be commended. That's a lot of yeah. Seventy a, pounds is big. That's, that's, Linville lost seventy 
that one year <laughs> that wasn't my goal i was trying to get back to the weight i was the last time i put that gold helmet on and i made it so um but i had it to give you know <laughs> and and uh, um but i you know it's life choices and and uh you, you know i'm going to be a grandfather and yeah. you want to you want to see see those days and yeah. be a part of that and and you and, and what you do is you just prioritize prioritize you know what's the most important things in your life and it's it's your family and and, and god and but you can't do it if you're unhealthy yeah. and uh and it's a commitment but it's doable where are you living now full-time uh full-time in cincinnati okay uh but i will be uh i will be here a, a, a good amount of time uh actually more than i that i uh had hoped for i no, i had hoped for more and uh, my 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 hope is coming true so the opportunity is good and I've been able to, you know, nurture relationships that I that I made through the coaching ranks and with people that I trust, yeah. and and that's what you have to do. And the NIL is just, uh, it's not going away, is it? It's not going away, and uh, so just get used to it. Quit complaining about it, and and give a little bit to it, even a little bit. You just get, you got to find a way to do it if you want your team to succeed, because. That, you know, there's going to be uh, some changes. You know, the feds will get a hold of this and regulation and stuff like that, probably with the NIL. Uh, but, you know, there's a big power shift still, you know, with what's going on in college football. There'll be some other movement, and uh, you got to be ready. Yeah, and the reports coming out of the ACC are that everybody's trying to bolt now because of what happened with Florida State. But but when you look at it, it's all going to change next year because it's going to be a 12-team right. playoff. Yeah, there's the, the 12, and then everybody's going to complain about you Oh, know, yeah, 13 and, 13 and 14. Yeah, exactly. You know, the first one out in the tournament. Uh, and, 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 you know, it'll, it'll show that, you know, the I'm telling you now, you take the top six teams, and then you go seven through 15. It's different. Oh yeah, the top six now; those are some real dudes. Well, you figured this. Like, this like, I'm not going I'm not gonna blast on them, but you know, with you know the JMU and Tulane, and you know where they're ranked, and there's some teams behind them that if they played them, they you know they're gonna right. lose nine out of ten. So the ranking system's a popularity contest in some aspects. You still. figure Oregon could win the national championship this year as good as they were. Sure. You figure you know Florida State probably not because of the quarterback situation. Georgia could win the national. This championship. was the perfect chaos for the last year of it. Right. This exactly. Shows, okay. It, it, it justifies going to it and stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Coach Greg Hudson, thanks for coming My in today. Pleasure. That was that Anytime. was awesome. And uh, I wish you the best. And and your strength is uh, commendable and an inspiration. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. We certainly appreciate having you here. Maybe we'll get together again while you're Anytime. in town that'd be that'd be a lot of fun don't forget one o'clock the john david baker press conference four o'clock east carolina maryland eastern shore that's the men's game first the women follow at 6 30 that's our show we'll see you back here next week on the brian bailey show this has been the brian bailey show Powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by The Angus Grill, Bostic Sug, Bojangles, East Coast Grading, Gavigan Insurance, Greenville Auto World, Papa John's, Greenville Utility Company, Pepsi, The Rick House, Taft Taft and Hagler, and Tiebreakers. Join us next week for another edition of The Brian Bailey Show right here on Pirate Radio.